Battle stations. Battle stations. Man is spotted bearing 335. Hot. Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the longest range weapon system in Carrier Command 2. Uh, my name is Bredroll, and in this video, we're going to be going over torpedoes. They are, as I said, the longest range weapon system available. You can kill things, often without even meaning to, 30, 40, even 50 kilometers away before you know it. Um, you may well have played online and fired a torpedo and then half an hour later uh, you'll have seen an alert message up here saying um, you've sunk a needlefish or something and you look on the map and it's halfway across the halfway across the world um, so we're going to look at torpedoes and we're going to look at some of the um, things you have to consider when when using them um, now they are uh, they're not like a missile they have to obey a few more um, aspects of physics compared to the missiles for instance, and I've got the map, hollow map here set up to show, we've got it set up on ocean current. Um, we can see our ship has been, we're, we're idle, we're pointing north, and I've got no engines on, but the ship's moving sideways. We're, we're being pushed by the, by the current slowly sideways. Um, that ocean current number there isn't hugely helpful, but if we go over here, we can see that we're actually being moved sideways by a speed of about 10 knots so it's, it's it's useful to know that this this speed here is speed over the ground not through the water and that will that might come in handy in a couple of minutes um, but before then I'll show you the effect on our torpedo if we just um, fire it from here stationary compared to how we're being moved around in the water and compared to how the current moves the ship around. So I've got one here and I'm going to set up to fire out at the left side of the ship. So we're pointing more or less north. Um, got the maintain heading thing on. Ship's been wiggling around a bit here and the torpedo when we launch it will take its path through the water but the water moves as well it's being moved by the similar amount to the way the ship is being moved it's traveling through the water um, so you need to take this into account when you're aiming at something because by the time the torpedo gets there the current might have moved the torpedo left or right or or slowed it down or sped it up we look over on here can see that with the ebb and flow of the current the torpedo has kind of sort of followed the same kind of pattern that we've been moving at so we're sort of traveling northwest and that does change so got to take that into account the other thing that people when they first use torpedoes don't quite immediately get and I'm in this camp too, is this this delay thing. Um, in the earlier versions of the game it was a bit more punishing but uh, it, it's a bit better, a bit more forgiving now. So what this delay means is if it's set to 30 that means that after 30 seconds the the torpedoes will uh, go active. They're, they're kind of homing sensors will kick in and it'll start looking for targets in front of it. So, um, so that means after 30 seconds, if if it finds something and hits it, um, then it'll do damage. If it hits something before the 30 seconds, then it won't do any damage. The torpedo won't have armed. Um, so you need to, when you're working out what number to use for this delay, which you can kind of use in 10 second increments, you, you need to know how far away you are from the target. Um, and so as it happens here, directly north of us, we've got a needlefish to kill. And it's on the radar. 
can zoom out on the radar. But this radar map isn't very useful unless you're really panicking. Um, for for an accurate torpedo shot without any stress, you need to properly know the bearing and the distance of things. So I I will tend to do this with the carrier gimbal camera. Um, so we've got this needlefish here. We can see from the camera it's at 006 from us and it's just over six kilometers away so 6.4 kilometers um, so these torpedoes travel through the water at about 50 meters a second so so in about a hundred seconds the torpedo can do s about six kilometers um, so 6.5 kilometers it's probably about 110 seconds in you know some people make themselves a kind of a chart and, a, and um, a, of timings and and ranges to help this out I, I've done that um, so we've, we've got a ship it's 6.5 kilometers 6.4 kilometers there's also a bit of current moving moving us sideways and there's a bit of current kind of pushing us closer towards the target the target isn't moving so that's easy for us but probably once we do start firing it will suddenly go crazy now I said 6 to 6.5 kilometers so you might initially think if I set this to say 110 and the bearing had about the 0 point the 0 point the 6 degrees that I found and we arm say one of the torpedoes you might think that's a good idea however what you also have to take into account is the ocean current here is is moving towards the ship so that means it will travel a little bit faster through over the land um, so it will probably take less than 100 seconds to get there so we should shave a little bit off of the delay so let's take 10 seconds off so that's that's about 500 meters if we take 10 seconds off um, but also it's going the water's being pushed sideways a bit so we need to we need to do a bit of quick trigonometry in our heads and kind of counteract it a bit aim here perhaps a few degrees off so that would be 0, 03 2 degrees taking into account a little bit of um, the motion of our ship as well and whether the target's moving so look we're it's it's net we're, we're as I've been talking we've we've been pushed by the current slightly close to it so it's under six kilometers away now we aim for 5600 meters at 034 but we should also reduce the timer enough so that the torpedo arms before it gets to the ship and can uh, home in on the target if it's moved so if we if we arm too late it's easier for the ship to evade us uh, or for us to just miss it entirely um, if we arm too early it's easy for the other ship to use a decoy so one of the noise makers or the uh, torpedo countermeasures um, but if we if we aim that the torpedo arms with with probably only about 10 seconds bef before it hits then if we get this range and angle calculation correct then we stand a good chance of getting a kill if we get it wrong um, then the torpedo will either overshoot an arm too late or it won't have enough time to home in on the target it won't be able to turn in time let's aim a bit more to cope with the water moving 5.5 kilometers and 40 degrees um, 5.5 kilometers is about yeah about 90 is right and we want 40 degrees don't have to be single digit degree accurate here if, if you're in under pressure and under fire it's better to just be one or two degrees off and fire the torpedo when when the captain asks you rather than to keep clicking the buttons up and down in heavy seas so let's fire so 
When you hover over the torpedoes on the control stations, you get to see this delay timer. You don't actually get to see this on the hollow map, so it's actually ideal for the torpedo operator to go onto this first control station to have a, have a bit of a look and see what's going on. So any torpedo we fire or any other aircraft drop, you get to see this um, the active delay. So in about in 50 seconds, this torpedo will go active and start hunting for targets. So the torpedo's gone active. It's gone active early enough to hit the target, but it's still quite a way off. That's it went active about two kilometers from the target. So I think maybe this one was working against the current. We can set the ocean current on this workstation. Yeah, so it it was working against some of the current to try and maintain its course so the component of the flow of the sea sideways and it ate into some of its forward speed and that probably means we should have made our delay a bit harder a bit higher but we got a kill so I hope this is helpful and thank you for watching <laughs>